Hello, this is Kay Kaltoff and we are going to do a stamp and chat with Kay today. We are going to focus on the Come Sail Away product suite from Stampin' Up. Um, let me see what page number it is in case some of you want to look it up in the new catalog. Pages 144, 145, and 146 feature this new product suite. It's kind of a starting section to a more masculine part of the catalog and so of course that's one of the first things I do when I get a brand new Stampin' Up! catalog is to see what kind of guy sets there are because you know we're gonna have girl sets. I mean stamping is kind of I don't know full of flowers and and pretty things and we love to make pretty greeting cards but but you know what I've got quite a few men in my life and so I'm always looking for masculine stamp sets. All right, yes, everybody's loving the new stamp set. So am I. We're loving the new catalog. I did find out that one of my customers did not receive the catalog that I mailed to her. Now, I did it all through Stampin' Up! So if you are one of my customers and you have not received your Stampin' Up! catalog, please contact me and I'll get, a, I'll get one in the mail for you right away. Um, I was a little surprised by that because... I haven't had any issues uh, the last couple of years. So this is the first kind of um, lost catalog I've had in a while. So, But no worries, I got it out today. Priority mail, so don't worry, Nancy, it's on its way. All right. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Kay. Hi, Paula. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to share with you. You guys are just, okay, first of all, I have to tell you, I have a corn allergy. And so, um, if you guys have ever looked at a loaf of bread in the grocery store and looked at the ingredient list, there's a lot of things on bread, in bread, that you can't even pronounce. I mean, making bread is pretty easy, um, and there's lots of recipes right now on Pinterest. And so, what I do almost every other day is make a loaf of bread, and I just got done baking bread, so I'm going to show you. I'll see if I can hold it up without it dropping. Here's my loaf of bread, everybody. Or I guess I have to show. Oh my gosh. Hold on. <laughs> it almost fell. Ah, it's kind of hot, so I don't really want to hold it. But here it is. <laughs> so this is my, my thing. So when I put the camera down, I'll share it with you. But the reason I have to make my own bread is because I can't hardly eat the bread that, that you buy in the grocery stores because they're just full of things that I can't have. And there's like a 50 to 75 different words for corn that um, I have to watch for because I can't have it. And so you would be surprised at how many things have corn in. So anyway, that's my little story. And I have to tell you, for those of you that don't know, a couple of years ago when I found out I had this corn allergy, I mean, I had gained probably about 20 extra pounds. And I just thought it was because, you know, I was going through my woman thing, you know, your late 40s, early 50s. And I just thought, oh, I'm just putting on weight because of that. Well, it turned out it was really a lot of inflammation due to the food that I was eating. And so I had to pretty much give up processed food um, because almost all processed food has corn in it. So I took away all the high fructose corn syrup, all the corn syrup, all the weird things that are corn, but you wouldn't know that they're corn. Um, took that all out of the diet and pretty much eat clean, which is pretty much whole foods and started making my own bread thanks to my daughter Kari who found a wonderful recipe for me on Pinterest. This bread is just flour, salt, yeast, and water. That's it. And it and it freezes wonderfully. It keeps wonderfully. I mean we slice it thin for sandwiches because it is a little bit more dense so we have to slice it pretty thin but it has really been a game changer for me. Otherwise I was like you know eating things because it's just not fun to have a lettuce have lettuce for sandwiches um i know some of you have what is it gluten allergies so you'd never be able to eat this but i actually don't have a gluten allergy it's just uh kind of a corn allergy so weird things oh my goodness you guys i wish you, yes it smells really good i wish you could be here and have uh, a slice of bread with me it's so good when it's just out of the oven with butter um so anyway Enough of that. I'm going to flip the camera down, give you a better look at this loaf of bread, and then we'll get started. 
So anyway, as I was telling you, once I discovered I had this corn allergy, so I gave up all this food that, um, well, probably was full of stuff that I shouldn't have been eating anyway, but I gave it up and I lost, oh my gosh, I think I lost 17 pounds in about five weeks. Isn't that crazy? And I never once felt like I was starving um, because I just switched over to eating really high quality, healthy, organic food. And I've kept the weight off totally just by making sure that everything I eat is real food and nothing in our house comes out of a package anymore. Just about nothing, once in a while. Um, and my husband, he's kind of crazy for uh, chips and stuff like that, so we do buy that occasionally so he can, so he doesn't have to feel deprived. But here is my, my bread, and I just love it. So if you are in my Happy Stampers um, Facebook group, I'm gonna put the recipe up there later. And it's a public group, so any of you can access it. But if you wanna be a member, it's also, um, you can join there and you can also um, get the, what I do is I just share when I'm going to be doing Facebook Lives in that group because you're more likely to get the notification. All right, so let me put this aside. I walked it across the room um, because I, I didn't want to take a chance with getting ink on it or something. All right, so <laughs> here is... The cards we're making today let me share with you all right so here we go and let me share with you what inspired me um, the catalog of course so this card right here almost cased exactly I'm going to show you how to recreate that that was a really fun one to make and super easy I think you guys are gonna love it and then then I was going to make this one because I liked it a lot. So I started out sort of in that direction, um, but then I switched things up. And actually what I came up with was more of a simple stamping card that doesn't really look anything like my inspiration piece. Uh, I was gonna start with these lighthouses and then I don't know, it just wasn't ringing my bell. So then I went ahead and did the sailboats and I found out I found in, in the product suite, there's some memories and more cards. And I just love this sailboat. It is, it's one of the cards in the memories and more. And so, um, so even though I started with this as my idea, you can see how, uh, how I took away a lot of layers. Really, the only layer that's even remotely similar is probably this one in the background here. So, I mean... It's, it's easy to take away, which is why Stampin' Up! did something really smart. They geared the whole catalog for really avid crafters and made all of the samples really um, kind of intense, like really almost complicated. But you can always take things away and go for simple. But at least we have the idea if we do want to get crazy and craft our brains out. So all the ideas for doing that are in this catalog. So that's kind of what I did here. Went crazy and copied it exactly, and then used one as my inspiration piece and ended up making something that doesn't even look like it, but I love it. And so that's what counts, right? Okay, so let me show you that, um, oh, I should show you one more thing before we get started stamping. The Come Sail Away product suite, if you love everything in here, it comes with everything we're kind of using today. So it comes with the sail away trinkets, the baker's twine, and that's gonna be my giveaway on, today is Thursday. I'm gonna give this away on Monday. So I'll give away two cards on Monday. The first winner in the prize is on Monday will get this card, and the second one will get this one. Um, and you will be getting the two yards of baker's twine with your cards because this is a beautiful baker's twine. It ties up so gorgeously. I don't know how they did it, but like this is just loose and, the, and it just lays on your card so beautifully. I can't believe it. So to get in the drawing, just comment, let us know where you're watching from. Um, what else? You can share this on your, stamp, or your Facebook timeline. That's always great because it really helps me uh, reach out to new people who might not know a lot about stamping. And who knows, maybe you'll end up with a, with a stamping buddy in your area. Um, 
It also includes the stamp set and the dies, and of course you would get the bundle price on that, and it includes um, a new embossing folder, which I don't have, because certainly if I had it, I would have used it. But you can get all of these products for one price, $94.75, just by putting in this number, and it's taken care of for you. Now, if you're one of my customers, I would encourage you to order another $6 worth or so, so that you can get two Happy Stamper tokens. You get a Happy Stamper token for every $50 that you order, every uh, product increment on your order and when you have 10 tokens you get a free stamp set of your choice all right so let me show you the memories and more card pack now I take mine apart and I keep them in a Stampin' Up case that looks like this and the memories and more card pack has stickers which is really good for quick crafting it has four by six cards that um are really neat because not only do you get ones that you can use with sentiments on and of course beautiful sturdy sheets you also get these these are some laser cut pieces that you can use on your cards I'm hoping this will show up let me just let me just do this like this so you can see it a little bit better isn't that cool oh my gosh it's so pretty um, so there's some really neat sayings cards and then of course let me go through and and then every once in a while you get one of these these laser cut pieces so really gorgeous so the laser cut pieces you're going to want to um, make a bigger card base if you want to use the full size laser cut piece because these are cut at four by six and so if you cut them down like to put on a regular size US card base you're going to be uh, cutting away some of these fantastic designs, and so you wouldn't want to do that. So what I recommend is in the back of our catalog, let me see if I can find it really quickly for you. Um, yes, right here. On page 171, there's assorted memories and more cards and envelopes, and so the card base is four by six, so this would fit perfectly on this card without having to cut it down. So they give you two different sizes. Um, you can use the small card bases, they're three by four, and then the bigger card bases are four by six. So that's something to know if you want to use these for card making. Otherwise, they're fantastic in scrapbooks, of course. So I'm gonna flip through these a little bit quickly. Oh, here's some more stickers. Here, look at this one. I'm just, I just want you to see these laser cut pieces, so they're so gorgeous. And on most of these, you get two of each, but with the laser cut pieces, you only get one of each design that they have in here. So I'm gonna keep flipping. Here's another one. I just have to show them to you because they're so nice. I mean, I was really surprised when I opened it up. And they're, they're kind of sturdy, so I mean, they don't feel really very flimsy at all. So I like that because I'm not very good at working with little fancy things. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. And then of course you get these, I gotta see what size they are. Three by four pieces. And so my cards today are using some of these that have been cut down. So I mean like look, look how nice these are. I really like them. And I love using them for card making because it's super fast cards. And I love super fast. All right, here's some more. So you get a lot. I don't know the exact amount. Maybe it says on the packaging. Probably says in the book. But I don't have that in my head. And it doesn't say it on the front of the package. And I didn't keep the back of the package. All right, so then what else do we have here? We have the Sailing Home stamp set and the dies. We have trinkets. These are cute, so you get, and if you're in my product shares, you guys, you can still get in on them. I'm offering them through June 30th. Um, you can get these cool little, I don't know, it's like a steering wheel for a boat. <laughs> Does anybody have any idea what you call that? I don't know. But it looks sort of like a steering wheel, and you see them on boats. And I think they do use them for steering boats. Um... Yeah, Bonnie's saying she had no idea there were laser cut designs in the card pack. I know, so cool. And then of course I know what this is. This is an anchor. 
So you get, I think there's 24 in a pack, so I think you get 12 anchors and 12 of these little, I don't know what they're called, steering wheels. I don't know, but you know. All right, so those are cool. And then of course the designer series paper, which we'll be using. And then I want to show you kind of a companion stamp set that's part of our, that is part of our carryover set. So this is the high tide stamp set. And I think it kind of works really well together. Obviously, you could use the images back and forth. You could use the sentiments back and forth. But what I was impressed with is I noticed that this lighthouse and this lighthouse looked a little similar. So I want to show you what I did. I stamped it, and then I used the lighthouse die. So I stamped the lighthouse from high tide onto a piece of Whisper White scrap. And then I took the, the cutout from, from uh, the sailing home bundle. I took this little lighthouse cutout and it cut out pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but I wanna show you, let me grab my scissors. So where you, all you would have to do once you have the base cut out is I think, let me hold this up to the camera so you guys can see up close. I think all you'd have to trim would be like right here. It's a little bit high there. And then of course you would wanna smooth this out. So it doesn't cut a perfect image from high tide, but it cuts a pretty close image and it cuts kind of all the detail part that we don't like to cut. So it sort of cuts that, which I really like. So I'm just gonna take my scissors here and I'll just show you what I would do if I were trimming this up. So I would trim in right here. And then I'd probably just, you know, go down here and trim this. I'd trim the bottom. And then I'd trim this off. Just bring it up. And that's all the trimming you have to do. So good news for those of you that already have the high tide stamp set and you're planning on getting the sailing home bundle you can use that little lighthouse cutout on the high tide stamp set and just with minimal trimming you have your um you have your cutout oh Rhonda's telling me oh and so is terry and so is bonnie you guys are amazing Roz is like me well it's like a ship's wheel but bonnie terry and Rhonda inform me that this well where is it here it is this little thing here is the helm Woohoo! Now I know. Thank you, you guys. The helm. Oh, I'm so glad to know that. So now I will know what to say. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. So do you guys like that information that this is kind of cool that you can use that one uh, die for the high tide? And like I said, very minimal trimming. And, and the hardest part really is cut out for you. So I'm excited about that. Okay. Now, let's get down to work. So, these cards aren't going to take that long to do because they're so simple. Because we're not doing even that much stamping. All right, so we're going to start with this one. I was kind of looking, so I spend, I used to spend quite a bit of time in Duluth because that's where my daughter went to school, Duluth, Minnesota. She just graduated this spring. But one thing about Duluth is it's like foggy and misty. It can be a bright sunny, summer sunny day and you get within a couple miles of Duluth and it gets foggy. <laughs> so it's going for that sort of foggy look. So, um, oh, and here's the inside of the car. Don't you love it? Okay, so this is just plain on the outside, but the surprise is going to be when you open it up. So here you have your Duluth scene. You open it up and it says, any day with you is the best. And then it says, you are my true north. So obviously this is something I would give my husband. I love it. Um, probably maybe Father's Day because I like to give him a card even though he's not my father. He is the father of my children. All right, so let's get started recreating this. We've got um, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And this is our Smoky Slate cardstock. Looks like this. And then for the inside, We've got Whisper White, four by five and a quarter, just our standard base. We're gonna do a little stamping here, so I'm going to grab, because we're using a black piece on the front and we're stamping the birds in black, 
I'm going to use Stazon. I wouldn't use Stazon if this is a photo, if it was a photopolymer set, but it is a red rubber stamp set, so Stazon is fine. The reason I wouldn't use Stazon with photopolymer is because it really stains your photopolymer, and you might not be able to see through it in the future, and that would kind of defeat the whole point of it being photopolymer. So I'm going to take the Compass Rose. I actually know the name for that. I'm going to get some Smoky Slate ink, and... We're just going to stamp this right here about a third of the way down. Don't worry, it'll dry lighter than it looks. Um, it will dry to be this color here. Then we're going to take this sentiment which says, You are my true north. Ink that up with some stays on jet black ink. And we'll just stamp this right across the front of that compass rose. Oh, Jennifer is telling me she never catches me live, and today she did, so she's super excited. Well, I'm super excited for you, too. Hooray! This is so fun. It's so fun to have you all here. Thank you for joining me. All right, so again, as you notice, it looks um, pretty similar in color now, but I promise that this will fade down a little bit once it dries a little more. Then we're going to take one of those cards from the Memories and More card pack, and we're not going to cut anything down. We're just going to use it full size. The Any Day With You is the best. On the back, there's just some kind of denim-looking lines, so I don't feel too bad about using it because I'm not real ex I mean, I'm not super excited about that, so I don't really care. But I love the front part, or this part. It's not necessarily the front. This is 3 and 1 8 by 4 and 1 8 so it must be one eighth inch larger than this. So this is three by four, and then this is one eighth inch larger. This is just Whisper White. So we're gonna take, uh, oh shoot, I didn't start my glue. Hold on, give me a second here. Um, so we're gonna take some glue. The reason I like using glue when we have a super skinny line is because I can kind of wiggle it into place. So I just put a little rectangular line of glue all the way around. Then I set this onto the 3 and 1 8 by 4 and 1 8 Whisper White and then I can just kind of wiggle it into place so you get that nice 1 8 inch border all the way around. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. All right, so now I am going to take, um, well, I might as well use glue because I have it started and it's fast. It's faster than snail. Okay, so then we're just going to set this over here on the left side. And we're just going to wiggle it into place. So the top and the bottom borders are about even, and the right and left is about even. And that looks good. Then we're going to take some snail, because I don't like to use glue just on pure Whisper White all by itself, because sometimes there's a glue line. It doesn't show up right away, but sometimes, you guys, it shows up like a couple months later. I know, because I've been card making for years, and I know that. All right, so I don't use glue on Whisper White or Very Vanilla when I know it's a layer that's going to show. All right, so here we go. And you can see how lightly this dried. It's now a, an exact match to our Smoky Slate. And You Are My True North shows up really nicely. Then for the next step, we're going to take um, some Designer Series paper. It's got this green side here. And I just cut it four by five and a quarter, and I've got all these sailboats. There's tons of sailboats in the harbor in Duluth, and so to me, that's why I wanted to use this. And I also wanted to keep it kind of foggy looking, so that's why I chose my colors. So again, I'm just gonna take some multi-purpose liquid glue. I'm gonna set this right here. And I, I see that I, I went a little too fast on what I wanted to show you because I should have taken this little black cutout, this little rope cutout, and I should have put that on this layer before I glued it down, but oh well. We'll just snip it even with this edge once it's down. So uh, what I did is I took the little, I really like this die. It's a rope die that comes with the bundle. And so I just I just took um, some basic black paper, used it in my die cutting machine, and you get this little cutout. So to put this on, I need to grab one thing. Hold on. 
I need to grab my craft sheet. So Stampin' Up! carries craft sheets, and, it, and I'm sure most of you have something like this. Um, then I'm going to take the back side of the rope, and then I'm going to use my snail. And I'm just going to run the snail, and I'm going to leave some, some levers. So basically, I'm not going to put any snail on the right or the left side. I'm just going to go right down the middle and stop before I get too close, because we're going to cut those pieces off. And it gives me a little bit of a place to put my fingers so I can get this just where I want it. So I'm going to set this up. And we'll probably put it, oh, I don't know. We are just going to make kind of a water line, and hopefully that, that's going to work. So just put it on straight. Then take your scissors. You could have trimmed this up easier had I remembered to um, do this before I glued it down. But we can do it this way, too. All right, there we go. Then we're going to take that Memories and More card piece, and we're going to trim it down about a quarter of an inch. So you're going to trim it down to 2 and 3 fourths by 3 and 3 fourths. And then it will look like this. And then we're going to uh, do a little stamping on it. I almost forgot. So we've got our stays on, jet black ink, and we're going to stamp some birds up here because there's loads and loads of seagulls around Lake Superior. All right, so we're just going to put this right here. And don't rock it. Just go straight down. Give it a little time. Give that ink some time to settle in. And darn it, I rocked it. Shoot. Oh, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bling this up just a tiny bit because, hello, when you're at the, when you are at the, um, lake sometimes there's little like when the sun hits the water there's little sparkles so I'm gonna do some sparkles even though this is for a guy Steve won't mind he knows I love sparkles and don't you worry because the person who wins on Monday I'll give them the good card that doesn't have the little oops up so I'm gonna grab my uh so what I do is I keep all of my my little, what do you call these, rhinestones into these little bags, and I have them separated by size. I'm gonna take the littlest one and the medium one. So you guys are getting to see me do things like when you oops up, there's all, you can always grab your embellishments and just make some, just make some little hidey places for those oops ups. So we're gonna put one sparkle here perfect it looks so cool almost like I planned that little sparkle there and take a little sparkle here put that there then where can we put another one so when I'm trying to decide where to put my third sparkle sometimes I like to kind of squint my eyes to see where it would look good and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it down here sometimes I like to have a sparkle like off the main image and maybe over here would be a good one you know where it, where the where the sun is just giving you a glimpse through the clouds and it's putting a little sparkle maybe like right here so i took another medium one and put it here okay sparkles complete you'd think i'd plan that oh yes elaine's telling me that mistakes make it handmade yeah that's all fine and dandy as long as you're not a perfectionist i'm a little bit of a perfectionist i'm trying to let go of that um but you know sometimes Sometimes it's hard. Okay, so gems aside. And did you see I was using my take your pick tool, have it real handy for once. All right, so here it is. The card is not quite complete. I almost thought it was. Hold on, I've got to find some dimensionals. Why do I not have dimensionals here? What is this? Is this dimensionals? No. What the heck? Okay, I'm walking across the room again. I gotta grab my dimensionals. I have no idea why my dimensionals would not be on my desk because they're always on my desk until I do a Facebook Live. That seems to be when they disappear. All right, so I am putting two dimensionals on the bottom, two dimensionals on the top, and one dimensional in the middle. And while I'm removing the peelies, I will look and see what you guys are all talking about. Oh, Lynn, we are, we are like two birds in, or what would you say that? We are like two birds of a feather, I guess. 
and and she's saying she's a f perfectionist too. I mean, I when I really had trouble with it early on in my Stampin' Up! career, I used to ditch the whole card thinking that I'd ruined it. So so now I've gotten a lot better about not ditching things just because there's like one little oops up. I just learned that, you know, rhinestones rescue just about everything, even guy cards. Okay. Here it is. It's done. It's beautiful. I might even like it better than I like this first one. So whoever wins this on Monday, I'll give you a choice. You can either have the one with the rhinestones or the one without. I mean, they're, they both turned out pretty good. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to work on the next card, which is right here. Oh, it's so pretty, you guys. And it just takes no time at all to do this, even though it looks super hard. It is not. It is not because, because we are using the Memories and More Come Sail Away card pack. So let me show you all the goodies here. And you guys, I don't think I showed you the inside on this card. Let me show it to you. Celebrate today. Happy Father's Day. Isn't it cool? And this is also a Memories and More card. So... I'm going to put, I'm not going to, okay, so, so on my giveaway card, because I know not all of you would want a Father's Day card. Some of you would prefer to use this as a birthday card. I will just give you the cutout loose. I won't actually glue it down. And so you can use it if you want to, or if you don't want to, you know, set it aside and use it somewhere else. But let's go ahead now and get started making this card. So of course, you're going to need a card base. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half, and this is old olive. And then, for the inside, oh, I'm trying to find where, where my inside piece went. All right, so I don't have the measurement here, but you all know. This is cut down a quarter of an inch. So this is four by five and a quarter. You know what? I am, yeah, four by five and a quarter and it's whisper white. I didn't put a measurement on here. Then you're gonna take a little piece of designer series paper and it's actually the sailboat one. So remember the card that we used here? So this is uh, the sailboat designer series paper, three fourths inches by four inches. And I am just going to add a little glue to the back and we're going to set this in right here on the whisper white paper and then you can wiggle it perfectly into place with the glue that looks great all right then we're just going to take a little snail on the back and set it in here and as i mentioned i'm not going to actually stamp on this we'll just leave it blank however i will include the cutout so let me grab the cutout so on this side it was a little sad because I cut away um, a really nice looking lighthouse but I really wanted that Father's Day so I, I partially cut it out so now I'll just finish it and one little tip for cutting is you actually move the paper not the scissors so I know many of you who are crafters know this but when you're cutting and you want to do a really special, nice job fussy cutting, you just keep your scissors in one place, keep cutting with it, but you're moving your paper, and then you get something that looks like this, a really nice cutout that, that looks semi-professional. All right, so like I said, I'll just leave this on the inside of the card loose for our winner on Monday. Okay, so now let's look what else we need. You will need one of the four by six cards that come in that um, card pack. And I cut it down then to four by five and a quarter so it'll fit on the front of our card base really nicely. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take some balmy blue ink. And we're going to take a sponge. Now, some people actually keep a sponge for each ink color. Oh my gosh, that is like way too organized. I love to be organized, but I don't like too much fuss. I don't like to have to put so many things away. So, so I just keep all my sponges in a big bin. It takes me like 30 seconds to rinse them out. And yes, it looks like this sponge is, is got a different color on it, but I assure you 
It does not. It's just stain, but there's nothing else on here. And so then I just reuse my sponges. So I'm going to ink this up with um, Balmy Blue. And then let me show you a little trick or a tip. When you first start with a sponge and you put it onto your card, it gives you kind of this weird little lumpy look. Um, and then you smooth it out. So start where you're going to be covering it up. So we're going to be covering it up with the lighthouse and the anchor. So we're going to start in this section and then work our way out. And then that kind of, I don't know, I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So like when you start and then you just go like this, I don't know, it sort of looks not that good right where you start with the sponge. That's why I usually start off the page when I'm sponging and sponge towards where I want to go, but I can't really do that here because we want to sponge. We want to sponge on the paper right from the middle. Okay, so that's pretty much all the sponging you need to do, and I left kind of the starting place right where it's going to be covered up, and we just have some soft sponging in other areas. It's so much fun, I can't stop. Okay, there we go. So that is one little tip for sponging this. Then you're going to take a piece of scrap, Whisper White. And we are going to get the Lighthouse. And we're going to get some Night of Navy ink. Here it is. So we're going to stamp this in Night of Navy onto our scrap of Whisper White. Then you're going to take it to your die cutting machine and cut it out. I can't pick it up. There we go. With this die right here. See how that fits on there perfectly? And you are going to end up with a piece that looks like this. So I did all that for you in advance. So that is pretty much the first thing that you want to put down onto this card base. So I'm just going to flip that over, add a little multi-purpose glue. And we're going to set this right here. So I'm just going to kind of angle it a little bit. There we go. Then we're going to grab those stickers that I was pointing out to you in the Memories and More card bake bag or base and we're going to use something that says celebrate right here so we've got our celebrate we're gonna set this right here next to the lighthouse and press that down and then you might have noticed I thought when I saw the catalog that this was like super amazing fussy cutting I didn't realize it's just a sticker so you can take the today sticker right out but I don't want to use it like this flat down I want to have it have dimension see how it sticks up like that I want it on dimensionals so because the back is very sticky and like I can't put dimensionals everywhere I want to I'm gonna flip this over I want to get rid of some of that stickiness so I'm going to take my embossing buddy and I'm just going to pop it over the top to get rid of the stickiness before I add the dimensionals. So I'm just taking the stickiness away with a little bit of chalk from my embossing buddy. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to grab my mini dimensionals, which I actually happen to have handy. Take my take your pick tool. I find that grabbing these mini dimensionals is almost easier with the take your pick tool. Then you can throw these onto your little um, cutout here. So I'll put, oh, that's just a little bit big. So I'm going to cut one of these minis in half. Hold on. Oh, this is where it gets tricky. But I want to keep the T a little bit raised because that wouldn't look good if that was flopped down. And then I'll take this other one that I just cut out. Sorry, you guys. I did want to show you, though, what this all looks like. So 
I'm going to put that down here at the base of the D. And then we just need one more. And I think it's big enough. I think it's little enough that I can fit it right here where the Y is. All right, so I'm going to hold this up to the camera so you can see what the heck I'm doing. So I just added little dimensionals to this. And then we're going to put this right here. Okay, so I'm going to take off the peelies and take out, take a check of... Oh, Lynn is asking, because right now we don't have a die cutting machine in our catalog. Lynn is asking if we've heard any news, and we have not. They are, um, they have a manufacturer lined up, but we don't know when it will be introduced. You know, my gut feeling is, you know, we can't go that long without one in our catalog. My gut feeling is it'll probably be introduced in, uh, in an, in something like a holiday catalog or maybe the occasions catalog. I can't imagine that we would have to wait a full year, but who knows? We'll see. All right, so I'm putting the today down like this. Oh, Kathy's given me a good tip. She says, in scrapbooking, we use baby powder blotched on stickers to remove stickiness. And then she says, now with stamping, the embossing buddy is a great tip. So she's saying thank you. Well, great. I'm glad I could help out with that. I just happen to have an embossing buddy handy on my desk, and, it, and I do use it to take stickiness off quite often. Okay, so what do we need now? Now we're going to need a scrap of crumb cake, and we're going to take our anchor, and we're going to take soft suede, we're going to stamp our anchor on soft suede, like so. And then you're going to run that through the Big Shot machine. Where'd it go? Oh, darn it, you guys. I just realized I made a mistake. Oh, well, it's not that big a deal. I'm just going to live with it. Okay? But you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to stamp the this little wheel in the background behind the lighthouse so I'm so sorry about that so you know what because I made a mistake on this I will give this card the one with no mistakes the perfect one I'll give this to the, my winner on on Monday and then I'll keep this one for myself because I thought that looked really good so what did I do had I done this right I would have stamped the compass rose in crumb cake ink right here behind the lighthouse. You know, when I put that lighthouse on, I was thinking to myself, man, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what. Well, it was the compass rose. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, getting back to what we were doing before I got all distracted, you take the anchor, stamp it with soft suede onto your scrap of crumb cake. Then on the back, you put some mini dimensionals. Um... And you know what? You're not going to, so if you flip the anchor over, you're going to put three mini dimensionals down the center and one on the left side. Do not put a mini dimensional on the right side because that's going to go over the top of the helm. So let's get the helm out because we can put that on already. Thank you guys for telling me what the name of that was. So here we're getting into the little um, sail away trinkets or the little sail away embellishments. And here's the little helm, the steering wheel of our ship. We're going to flip it over and we're going to add glue dots to it. So I've got my, t again, I love using take your pick tools for, for grabbing glue dots. It's very handy. So I'm just going to grab a couple glue dots, put it on the helm. And then I'm going to put that, the helm, right here. There we go. Then we can take the anchor, take off all the little peelies here. You know what? I should probably have threaded it, but I'll thread it. I'll thread it in a minute here. I should have probably threaded it before I put this down, but oh well. Why not make another mistake? Why not? Okay, so we're just going to set this on like this. So where we don't have the glue dot is going to go on the helm, or where we don't have the dimensional. We'll set that in like that. It looks pretty good. Okay, so the next step that I forgot to do is, but it's not too late. 
We're going to take a little bit of the rope. So we did the rope dye with old olive cardstock, and I've got it already pre-cut. So again, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to grab the craft sheet from Stampin' Up, and I'm just going to, again, you see the snail doesn't stick to the craft sheet, so it's kind of nice. So I'm just going to put this on the back, leave a little handle for myself for picking it up. And then I'm going to set it here because that's how they have the sample on the catalog. So I want it to look pretty similar. So we're just going to set that down like this. Kind of, you can rub off any excess uh, snail if you want to. You can even pull it up and re redo it if you haven't burnished it down too deeply. I had it a little crooked. So then I'm going to flip it over, take my scissors, trim it even, and there it is. It looks so good. So now the only thing we need to do really to finish this panel is to add the twine. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put this on the card and we'll add the twine as the last thing. So I'm going to take some multi-purpose liquid glue, add it to the back of this panel, which is almost done, set this on our old olive card base. Oh, it looks so good. Then we're going to take, where'd it go? This is my giveaway too, and now I can't find it. Oh, here it is. So it's like a Sahara Sand and Knight of Navy uh, Baker's Twine, which looks really good. And for those of you that have kind of big fingers like I do and have a heck of a time trying to get twine through things, um, you can take these like little dental floss threaders. My, my dental hygienist always gives me a few of these and just run that, run your thread through that threader and then you can go through that little tiny hole with your baker's twine, if I can grab it, and there you go. So you've got your you've got your anchor threaded. Cut that off. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little knot, but I don't want the knot tied directly onto the anchor. So I want the knot to be a little bit up like this. So I'm going to try to do that. Just like that. Then to get the ribbon to lay the way, or to get the everything to lay the way I want it to, you just have to kind of play with it a little bit. And it lays so nicely. And there it is. So then take your um, ribbon scissors, which I didn't do the first time and notice. Take your ribbon scissors, and there you go. So you have this beautiful card complete. And it was really, really easy and lots of fun to do. All right, so there it is. Here's the one I just did, and here's the one I had done in advance. And the only difference is, is I stamped the little um, compass rose in the one that I did in advance. So I'll make sure I give away this one, and I'll keep this one for myself, because this one looks almost exactly like the sample on the front of the catalog. So this is what inspired me. Stampin' Up! has some really good artists. All right, so I'll show you all the cards we did today. These two and these two. There we go. So thank you, you guys, for joining me today. It was so nice to have you here. I truly appreciate it.